Large format audio systems have seemingly been out of fashion given the severity and length of the pandemic. As such, the last two years have been characterised by a large number of small, compact digital devices flooding onto the audio market. With the FIFA World Cup kicking off in late 2022, it is interesting to know that EV systems have been installed in World Cup venues for decades, including Germany, Brazil, and nine out of the 10 South African stadiums for the 2010 World Cup. EV has accrued almost 100 years of loudspeaker heritage within stadiums. Renowned for their directivity, extremely good long throw capabilities, and high output, the MH4020AC and the MTL4, MTH4 have become industry standards of stadia sound. EV specialist knowledge and expertise has led in more recent years to the establishment of the EVF and EVH enclosures, together with line array formats such as the X2. And now EV has launched MTS, a large, high output, point source loudspeaker for large venue and outdoor installations. Following their acquisition by Bosch in 2006, EV has operated within the Bosch Communication Systems portfolio alongside Bosch, Dynacord and RTS. Today, I'm joined by three distinguished gentlemen from that group who will help to highlight why EV has delivered MTS and what distinguishes this loudspeaker from others currently available in the market today. Global Product Manager of Installed Audio, Bob Reader joins me from the EV headquarters in Burnsville, Minnesota. Bob previously enjoyed senior roles at both Shaw and Jensen prior to joining Bosch in 2011. Hello, Bob. Good afternoon. Also based in Burnsville, Engineering Manager of Installed Audio, Andrew Pardo, is going to be better explaining the technology within MTS. Now in his fifth year with the company, the fellow Englishman has previously worked for Music Tribe, Martin Audio and Turbo Sound. Hello, Andrew. Hi there. And thirdly, operating seven time zones ahead of his colleagues, Technical Director of Global Applications, Oliver Sarm, joins us from the Dynacord headquarters in Straubing, Germany. Having joined the company in 2000, Oliver holds a Master's in Electrotechnique und Acoustic from the Technical University of Berlin. Guten Tag, Oliver. Guten Tag and hello, everyone. MTS, what a revelation this has been. To be bringing out a stadium loudspeaker at a time like this, it's like a hallelujah moment. Why did EV decide to embark on the MTS project, though? Um, I know it wasn't today or yesterday. It's been going on for a while. Andrew, please uh, give me some ideas. There's a number of reasons for, for launching it, but um, one of them was from an R&D point of view. We launched a, a technical pre-study about three years ago just to see if it's possible to get the kind of SPL levels that were requested by product management over the full frequency range. The initial study showed that with the latest technology transducers in a really big box, we could get the 150 dB at one meter and control the directivity throughout the frequency range. And that convinced us that we had a pretty good winning product in conception. EV obviously did the homework. You don't just leap in with a design. You've, you did some consultation here. How did you consult in gaining that market feedback, Bob? Well, we looked at a number of sources when we were trying to define what MTS would be. Uh, first off, we looked at the relatively few boxes from competitors who fit in this high output long throw category. Then we went to our global sales teams and maybe most importantly uh, for our internal investigations, we talked to Oliver and his team uh, that's spread out throughout the globe, uh, specialists in application design, in stadium design, in all kinds of design, and collaborated with them throughout the development actually. But then we went outside to talk to customers of all sizes. We talked to very large consultants. We talked to integrators who do small sports fields that might use one speaker. And it wasn't just to get their feedback on the competition. It was more about um, what do they need to do that they can't do with any product that's available now? How far does the sound typically need to throw in their designs? And at the furthest extent of that, how loud does it need to be? And what sort of response range do they need? So those were all the sort of things we put together to make sure we came up with a product definition that would be scalable. So it would fit from the very smallest applications to the very high demand applications. 
And that's how we came up with the definition of MTS. Having gathered all that homework and all those notes and uh, put them into sort of, um, I don't know, file, what was the design brief for MTS to fulfill that gap in the market from there, Bob? We had not had a speaker to replace our MH horns from, from some time ago, and we have had numerous requests for something uh, with more output than our EVH series which has been a very successful stadium line. It's in um, soccer stadiums all over the world. It's in many types of outdoor venues, very flexible, very high performance, but people just wanted more output. So we wanted to do more than just add another box to the, the currently available offerings. We wanted to sort of advance the state of the science and really show what you could do in high performance with a point source loudspeaker. Andrew, you were given a design brief at this point, and you came up with four main goals. These are very important to the design of this cabinet. Um, tell us about the challenges. Tell us about those four main goals. As we got handed over the design from uh, MKP we, uh, product management, we also, you know, we were talking to the customers with them as well. But the first main goal that we found was that this, this speaker had to throw a really long way. While we say we needed the output of 150 dB peak at one meter, that was really a metric to, to get us this long throw. And we were looking at getting, you know, over 100 dB SPL up to 180 meters, maybe 600 feet away, or at least very clear vocal and speech, uh, but we're also trying to make sure that we've got good sounding music with some bass and some uh, high frequency. So we've got an SPL criteria. Um, the second thing is very precise coverage. So we, as usual, we want to maximize the, the sound output in the, uh, the main coverage, but also we wanted it to drop off very quickly outside of that main coverage so that we could increase the STI and, and give a very clear sound, even in a reverberant space. And then full bandwidth. We wanted to make the speaker go up to maybe 18 or, or 20 kilohertz. Um, and even with long distance, you get a lot of air attenuation, um, still delivering some very good hi-fi level, high frequency performance at a long distance. And then we also wanted plenty of bass. A lot of speakers in this market category require augmentation with subwoofers to get any kind of low frequency performance. And we wanted it to have enough good bass to give you the beat, to give you the, the bass guitar uh, through normal music so that we could make people dance, so that we could give people a really good time at a very long distance. The fourth criteria we had, and this is a bit of a differentiator, um, is we wanted to have a, an integrated cardioid version. So with a, a box of this size, you can get really good dispersion control, maybe down to 350 hertz, 300 hertz even. Uh, but below that, you, you're kind of at the mercy of the, the size and shape of the thing. So by adding a cardioid section to the back, we were actually able to get a full frequency range directivity control. So everything right from the very lowest bass frequencies right up to the top high frequencies were all controlled within that beam width. So, Bob, um, you've integrated some new technologies, but crucially, some old technologies from winning designs. Can you tell us what legacy technologies you've uh, taken from previous designs and integrated at MTS? There were three main technologies that we updated for MTS. The first one was our manifold technology uh, that we adapted from earlier systems, in particular, our MTL4 and MTH4 concert loudspeaker systems. Some listeners and, and viewers might uh, recognize those models. Uh, so the manifold technology combines the output of multiple drivers uh, into a, a single path. And we use that in MTS uh, on the mid high frequency drivers, but also on the woofers. So this gives us uh, uh, control over the um, combination of output from multiple sources. Second technology we relied on heavily is our hydro waveform converter technology. We borrowed that from our, our line arrays. The purpose of that is to give you a coherent output in uh, a different wave shape than the one that comes out of the transducer at the input to the main horn. And then the third technology is constant directivity waveguides. 
constant directivity horns are a technology that we pioneered, actually. So we know quite a bit about them. Um, but uh, these were very important for uh, the MH horns, and they are used in most of our loudspeakers these days. Um, so for MTS, the full frequency output, full acoustic output of the system goes through a single constant directivity horn, giving us a true point source, in fact. It's great that you've retained those technologies and integrated them into this box. But Andrew, you've also brought out two new technologies um, incorporated those in MTS. Uh, tell us more about those. I'll get a little bit technical. I want to take you through a little bit of a story of how the the sound wave comes right from the beginning of the horn all the way to the to the to the this real world. This is interesting. Yes. So first of all, we, we have two coaxial compression drivers. So it, it manifolds by co connecting the the HF and the the MF diaphragms output into into a single source. Okay. And that actually gets us the frequency range all the way from about 400 or 450 hertz all the way up to 18, 20 kilohertz, okay? That's a really good start. We've then got this lossless hydra. So we looked at the hydras from the line arrays and they normally use pin diffraction methods or they use a kind of um, fin methods to, to form this waveform into this uh, single wavefront. Um, but what we did is we actually used... Um, uh, finite elements and boundary element methods and did a, a huge number of iterations to do all of that waveforming, but without any obstructions in the horn. So it's purely by the ge geometry. One thing that made this possible was the fact we had access to the Bosch high performance supercomputer where we send off these uh, finite element jobs that would normally take maybe a month to calculate all these millions of calculations. It comes back in a couple of hours and we can iterate and iterate and iterate and, and make improvements to the design and, and come up with this final design. Um, so once you've gone out the the coaxial compression drivers, you go through the lossless hydra, uh, you form this strip source that then drives the main uh, wooden, wooden horn that gives you the constant directivity. And then we, uh, once again, we then manifold again, we've got four 15 inch drivers on the outside of this wooden horn that feed into the same horn. And they add to the waveform as it progresses out through the horn. Uh, and then they then add in that frequency range from about 400, 450 hertz, uh, all the way down to 50 hertz. So that gives you your solid base performance, but it also gives you your solid um, low parts of the male and female vocal, this kind of range, uh, the grunt in the guitar for the heavy metal, that kind of stuff. The final section in the, the full range response is we have a perimeter port that goes all the way around the horn. Um, and this kind of gives us the absolute maximum directivity we can at low frequencies. You lose control there anyway, but by having this, this uh, port all the way around the edge, you get some directivity control and it maximizes the, the base response from those four 15 inch drivers to give you that solid base output. Point source. Why is it back in fashion? Well, I don't know that it ever went out of fashion, but with a point source compared to a line array, you can get very precise horizontal and vertical directivity control, generally with fewer boxes. With the line array, your vertical coverage is dependent almost entirely on the length of the array. So that means sometimes it gets quite long and it becomes harder with those longer arrays to get a very precise horizontal coverage. So compared to a point source, a line array will typically require more boxes. That's potentially more weight. Uh, more amplifier channels, it can interfere with sight lines. So the point source solution usually can come in lower weight, fewer boxes, and in many cases, more economically. So that lower cost translates not just to the cost of the installation of the product, but also to the cost of ownership over the long term if you're running fewer boxes and you're having to maintain fewer amplifiers. So a horn-loaded speaker, unlike a line array, lets you literally point the sound at the people, which is what we want to do, and point it directly at the area you want to cover. That's more, I would say it's less uh, a direct solution coming from a line array in that respect. To power the box, Andrew, um, and to create some DSP, give it some DSP so um, designers can make sure they can figure the sound right for their purposes. You've turned to Dynacode's IPX series, um, crucially. Why have you uh, chosen that as a partner amplification platform? 
using the dynamical amplifiers, uh, they give me everything I need as a speaker designer. So I've got like really good peak voltage, so everything that I need there. It's backed up with plenty of current, so it can drive the power into the speaker. Uh, and it's got a high performance DSP and that it's got the ability in the DSP that I can mix and match between FIR and IIR equalization to come up with exactly what I need for the MTS. As you can see, it's got some very complicated time alignment and uh, frequency response uh, corrections that we need to make to get everything to work together. I've got everything I need. It's also got very flexible limiters technology. It's got the proprietary temp limiter and also RMS and peak limiters that we need for controlling the transducers and making sure it's 100% reliable. Um, and the MTS itself was actually designed looking at the IPX range. So we made sure that the, you know, the uh, transducer impedance and the way we were paralleling and serial connecting and the, the passive crossover, it was all designed to work exactly for the, the voltage and current outputs of the Dynacord amplifier. So everything works as a, as a system in a, a kind of synergy. The combination of the MTS high sensitivity and the IPX, it's got class D or better than class D efficiency. Uh, it means that we can deliver a solution that's economically um, the most um, efficient, but also it's got the smallest carbon footprint. It's a very green system uh, compared to something like headphones or at home speakers. Because of the sensitivities and the efficiencies we've got, we deliver a lot more SPL for your watt of power. I was astounded by the figures, and it's a four-channel um, platform, multi-channel, 5,000 watts per channel in some cases. You hardly use, one MTS box is only, I think, using two channels of that. It's very efficient compared to a line array. Yeah, absolutely. And you can run a couple of boxes off an amplifier easy. We give a, a guide for exactly which ones. Uh, the, the sweet spot for cost performance is probably the IPX 10.4, which is a, a 10 kilowatt into a four-channel amplifier. Another couple of good features that I want to mention on the amplifiers as well, they've got a ghost power feature. It keeps a DSP section alive for instant recovery and power loss. So it's a very safe system. If anything happens to the system, it'll come back in exactly the same format. You can make those uh, you know, security announcements so if you've got a lot of speakers in a stadium, you want to get people out fast, what better than a 150 dB speaker that's driven by the 10 kilowatt amplifier? Dynacord has a, a SonicQ uh, software system that also can work with our, our preview software system. So with the thing, you get the full system package. So Oliver, bringing you into the, uh, into the equation here, beyond the stadiums, where can MTS be ideally be deployed? As you say, beyond stadiums, and that's exactly the important thing. I mean, we heard about the unique features and the design brief for MTS. And there is a lot of things which may apply to your individual project design. So some designers will choose MTS for its high SPL. Others will look primarily also for the full range capabilities and the full range output of the box. And some will take into account the precise coverage control. And in the end, others may look for projects where all this matters and is important to create a successful design. So you can say it will scale to most outdoor applications where you see this long throw requirements at long throw of large scale installations with either with a single box or several dozen so it's appropriate for outdoor music for theater um, venues could be theme park attractions public plazas or racetracks um, and when you think in the opposite direction also for indoor arenas of course um, houses of worship sometimes and so there is even more than one ev colleague here that wants to hear an mts system um, in a club so the potential range of applications is actually quite broad and goes far beyond stadiums. So there is much more where you can consider an MTS, yes. Andrew, moving back to yourself, um, you got to hang it, you got to fix it, you got to stick it somewhere. <laughs> Rigging flexibility and ease of install features. Um, obviously, you've done your homework here as well. Can you tell us more? When we were talking to customers at the beginning of the project, we had one customer that basically, he was from the South of America, and he says, I want to hang and bang and go on down the highway. So the idea is you've got a single box. It does all the base and everything. You put it up there. With this box, it's got multiple M10 suspension points on it. We don't actually supply any custom rigging like you would do for a line array. Uh, so you can just suspend it from four eye bolts, okay? And you can put one straight up. Um, there's a, a M10 suspension points all over the box. And in the, in the installation manual, we provide like complete guidelines so that we can help structural engineers to incorporate the MCS 
directly into the building design. Um, and we give them confidence because all of our tested data for the, the suspension points, we give eight to one or 10 to one uh, safety factors above the, the load that they can take. Uh, so this is typical for an overhead loudspeaker. The speaker is designed with a square front, so you can rotate it to either direction. It still looks the same, plus it will array with other MTS of the same sort. So you could have a 60-40 with a 40-60 or a 40-30 with a 30-40 or any combination of those. The width of the speaker is also the same width as our X12-128 double 18 inch very high power subwoofer so if you want to augment the speaker with that bottom octave and do you know up to concert level performance you can also add that in and it will all array in a kind of um single vertical array or horizontal array depending on which way you want to do it so you could have an mts with a subwoofer either side and it would just look like a nice simple square block that you could then hang into the building moving back to yourself oliver um, we're going to skip out Germany. We're talking about a US design box cabinet, essentially. Well, it's born in the US with your help. How is this going to be promoted? Is this relevant to stadium design in Asia Pacific? Definitely. I mean, um, of course, primarily you may think about projects in North America because of their size and shape of the stadia uh, in North America. But of course, MTS is currently being designed into projects also outside North America and also including proposals in EMEA and also in Asia Pacific. And in many of these cases, we will be offering an MTS design as an alternative to line array uh, designs, whether it's ours or someone else's. Um, just to show the capabilities, what MTS can offer here as a new solution for the stadium projects. And um, designers have simply never had a tool like MTS before. So we um, do here support uh, with our design work to show also what MTS could do. And um, once they hear the speaker and model a few venues, I'm certain that MTS will become an important speaker in their offerings. Can the MTS take the weather <laughs> for 20, 30 years, Andrew? Well, I mean, 30 years is, is probably a bit of a stretch for any loudspeaker. We do offer this as a, an outdoor, fully weatherized model. Um, we, we do give a, a five-year warranty, so that's what it's actually guaranteed for. We've got our own weatherization process that's been developed over the years with extensive studies. Um, it was called the FG process. We've now gone to FW process. And what we do is we coat the inside and the outside of the box with a, a very strong coating. It's actually the same coating you use for truck flatbed liner. So it's a, it's a PU and we pay attention to sealing up everything about the box so there's no water intrusion. The, the installations we've done so far do last uh, certainly the five years. We've had some last 10, 20 years. So even in the, the worst, harshest conditions, we can still warranty it for five years. So it'll last longer. The, the ingress protection is IP55. Um, so that'll stop the water actually getting in. All the grills are stainless steel. They've got a hydrophobic mesh behind them. Uh, and for the wiring on the back, we've got a, a, a panel that goes over the back with some gland nuts that seal it all right up. So we believe we've got pretty much the best weatherized solution on the market at the moment. STI is very important for consultants and designers in stadiums. So if you've got 40,000 seats in a stadium, every seat's got to have an STI of 0.6. You're never going to have a one box solution for all that. Um, do you need fills for lower seating areas in such a design as that, Oliver? The most important thing I would like to state here before we look into it in regards to the loudspeaker design, I mean, the most important thing is that the STI is not solely dependent on the loudspeaker or the loudspeaker system. Since the venue acoustics play a huge role and have an even bigger impact on the final STI, so reverberation time, reflective surfaces, etc. So all this is much more important. But yes, you are right. I mean, the topic of designing a system to achieve the best possible speech intelligibility and an STI of 0 0.6 or close to 0 0.6 is a goal for the electroacoustic design. And um, I think the full range directivity control of an MTS and especially the cardioid versions 
um, will minimize spill outside the intended coverage pattern and very accurately for the full bandwidth. And so from the loudspeaker aspect to create the best possible direct to reverberant ratio to achieve the best possible STI, MTS may become your best friend when you're um, looking for such a design goal and an ambitious STI target. So using filled speakers, yes, no, will always depend on the individual design, but MTS is definitely an excellent starting point to achieve um, the STI goals which are required, yes. This is many for yourself, Bob, but you know, all three of you, please feel free to, to join in. Um, really examples of how the system is faring beyond Burnsville. Uh, how are the reports going at the moment? Well, there's a quote, and it's attributed, at least the way I've heard it, to Leo Barani, sort of the father of architectural acoustics. And that is, anyone who ever designs a loudspeaker system will believe that it's the best sounding loudspeaker system ever created. So as we're developing the product, we all had a chance to listen to it. And we felt it's an EV speaker. It sounds like an EV speaker, but this is really something more, it's something special, it's something different. So we began talking to uh, key consultants and installers and a lot of the folks with which we had researched use cases early on. So they knew on paper what it looked like. They knew what the coverage plots looked like. They knew what the response was. They knew what the output was. So for us, the proof then was always that someone else gives you feedback that that agrees with your feeling that it's really going to add something to the offering that people have a new tool for them to work with. So we've now demoed it in various parts of the US. It's been in the UK. It's been on the continent in EMEA. And I would say that in, in every instance, people came in with high expectations because of what they already knew about the box. And it could not have gone better it's safe to say that we've exceeded uh, everyone's expectations in terms of how the product sounds. And that's directly the feedback we've had in terms of the sound quality, in terms of how the sound quality doesn't change for quite a long throw as you may move from one spot and then further away from the loudspeaker. And the other thing is the cardioid versions. We always include a cardioid as part of the demo after they've got a sense of the the basic three-way system and many folks who come to our demos say well i've heard cardioid demos before i don't need to go hear that and we then ask them to just humor us go ahead take a step behind the array and it drops jaws because it really does reduce output behind the array the combination of the cardioids on the side and that really tight pattern control coming out the front um, so we could not be more pleased with the reaction we've had. The box hasn't been heard yet in Asia Pacific, mostly because it's taken us a little longer to get it there than we had planned these days. Uh, but uh, there should be units very shortly available for demos in Asia Pacific. So folks there will have a chance to hear it as well. But yeah, we couldn't be more pleased with the reaction from users. And, and as a result, there are projects being designed in all regions both by Oliver's application design support team and by major consultants and integrators. MTS is an EV loudspeaker, so it fits perfectly with its voicing, with its sound to the existing EV family. So whatever you will have to use in combination with MTS, so it might be one of our EV innovation family models or one of our weatherized install models from the SX or ZX range, um, fits perfectly. So you can really combine MTS as what you know from ElectroWise, not only technology-wise, but also sound-wise and system-wise, I would say, that it forms an acoustic solution for your individual project um, based on all the ElectroWise technology and systems available. Obviously, you've achieved your goals. It's ready to roll out throughout the world now. Um, but <laughs> let's be fair, there's been an event the last couple of years that have made stadi taken stadiums out of vogue. Um, would you really have pursued this project uh, if you'd known what was coming in 2020? Yes, we still would have pursued it. Uh, our last few product introductions have 
been on the smaller scale loudspeaker ranges. And um, the last time we had some real technology pop through would have been the introduction of X1 and X2, which has been, you know, half a dozen years now uh, since that is out. So it was time to take the restraints off the engineers and let them really show what they could do. And so we could make a statement to say uh, what EV is capable of. And secondly, um, we wanted to design a system that would be scalable uh, for all sizes of venues up to the very largest. And we wanted to make a technology statement for what a point source can do in the right application uh, and in the right application uh, that a point source can be a better solution than a line array. It's like we've pressed a big pause button the last two years. I know we've started the football, the soccer, sorry, here in the UK, like in Germany, without fans there, which was, I don't know, it was okay, but it's lackluster. We missed the fans being in the stadiums, but we're going to be making up for lost time now, I think. Um, all those buttons that were paused, it's going to be off. Are we going to be making up for lost time? Is it? Can we look forward to sports again in 2022 and onwards? Definitely, we look all forward to sports event with excited fans, with, with a big crowd of people in the stadium celebrating it, not just as sports, but yeah, as an event. I mean, this is what sports be developed also too in the la over the last years and where we were part of with, with many, many installations in, in the last decades. Um, keeping up with the um, higher demands also for the sound system to entertain the people in, in these events. And I mean, one good thing might be with the pandemic that we all recognized how important these things are. As, as Andy said right now, we are all human beings who like to like these things, yeah, to, to come in uh, and celebrate sports and other events in stadiums, arenas. And um, yeah, we felt how it is not to have this. And to have these ghost games with no audience in the stadium and empty stadiums, it is strange. It feels absolutely unnatural. So we all look forward to this. And um, yeah, I think we will all enjoy it even more because we know now what we haven't had for a longer time. So it will be, it will come back. We all will enjoy this. And um also with great sound systems. Will the new technologies be added to future EV speaker designs, particularly manifold technology? I mean, absolutely. You know, the technology um, generated by Electrovoice R and D is is continually improving. But this is this has been a, an additional step in technology on top of that. Um, and as NTS is pretty much a flagship product, it's right at the top of the performance range. You know, that technology then filters down through all of the products that we do, all of the loudspeaker products. So there's technologies we've de developed here, you know, the way we get the, the base out of it, this uh, new low loss Hydra, the ability to manifold in different sections. And that's applicable to most of the things that we do. So it's the smaller point source, uh, future line array, uh, even everything down into the smaller portable speakers that we do. In addition to that, you know, we haven't stopped doing R&D in the meantime. We've got other stuff that we've uh, got under wraps that will be uh, available uh, shortly. You know, we, we really do feel that, um, you know, over the last, well, 90 years and, you know, certainly the last 10 years or so, the, the Electro Voice re uh, research and development team in, in kind of partnership with Dynacord as well over in, in, in Germany, um, we've got lots of really good technologies and, and we believe that we are, a, you know, a world leader in today's technology. Finally, we've touched on this already, Bob, um, a PowerPoint. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit obsessed because all we get nowadays is line array, line array, line array. Do you hope to continue with this, you know, pursuing this legacy that you've had here with Point Source? Line arrays may have a bit of the spotlight right now, but if you think about it, Point Source speakers have never really gone out of fashion in the sense that they're a pretty necessary part of most designs. You go to a venue, whether it's a concert hall or a sports venue, and the audience area is covered by line arrays. You'll probably find if you go out into the concourses or the public areas or the hallways, there'll be point sources there. So they've always been a critical part of most installations. But EV will always recommend the best solution for a given application. We also make five families of really excellent high performance line arrays. And when that's the right solution, we will absolutely recommend a line array 
or a system that uh, uses point sources in combination with our line arrays. But we'll always go for the best solution that matches the venue. With the addition of MTS to the portfolio, we can now look at designs in which a line array was specified, but a point source probably would be a better solution. And we can now deliver that solution with a very high output box with precise directivity control and hi-fi quality. So we'll still recommend a line array when that's the optimum solution, but uh, overall, we'll look at our portfolio, we'll look at the venue and its requirements, and we'll recommend the best solution, whether that's line array or point source. So thanks again to all our panelists for joining me today, and most importantly, thanks for watching. We hope you found the conversation both engaging and informative. I certainly learnt a lot and look forward to being entertained in a stadium hosting this EV system. If you do have any questions or would like more information regarding MTS and its capabilities, please do get in touch. For immediate assistance, Patrick Howe from Bosch Singapore is on hand and can be contacted at the email address listed on the screen. Or you can simply scan the QR code shown here on the screen, which will take you directly to his contact page. Thanks again and goodbye.